Hello everyone, welcome to another video and this is Linux for DevOps Crash Course Part 10. So in this video, I want to talk about cron jobs. So cron jobs is a way in Linux by which you can schedule jobs at a particular time of the day and you can do it periodically. Okay, so if there are some tasks that you want the system to execute on its own without you having to interact with it, you can schedule it via cron jobs. Okay, so a job is, a not, is nothing but just a command that needs to be executed at a particular time. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just read through the slide. So cron D daemon is enabled and started by default, is controlled by multiple configuration files, one per user, edited with cron tab command. So all the user uh, cron jobs uh, can be scheduled using cron tab command and the daemon or the service that runs behind these cron jobs is cron D. Okay, so D stands for daemon. These configuration files give users and administrators fine grained control over exactly when their recurring jobs should be executed. The cron D daemon is installed as part of the crony package. Okay, so the package that installs the cron D daemon is called crony. Okay, and you can query it using the RPM command that we learned in the last. I think last or the second last video, uh, rpm space hyphen q space crony. Okay, but this package is installed and configured by default in Red Hat systems. Okay, then how to schedule the jobs? I mentioned a few commands. Uh, so, crone tab hyphen l is to list the jobs for the current user. So, the user that you have used to SSH to a Linux machine, if you run the command crone tab hyphen l, it's going to show you the current jobs sh scheduled for that particular user. Okay, crone tab hyphen R is to remove remove all jobs for the current users, and then crone tab hyphen E stands for edit, is to edit jobs for the current user. <clears throat> if you're logged in as root user, you have the option to modify the jobs for other users using hyphen U space username option. Okay, so let's go to our terminal and see these things in real. So here I'm. I'm logged into the Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9 machine, which is an AWS EC2 instance. And if I run the command cron tab hyphen L, so it says no cron tab for EC2 hyphen user, which means I don't have any jobs scheduled right now for EC2 hyphen user. Okay. Then a cron tab hyphen R also will not give me anything because there are no jobs, but if you have some jobs that you want to remove, you can do cron tab space hyphen R. Okay, no cron tab for EC2 hyphen user once again, and cron tab hyphen E is to uh, schedule a job. So when you run this command, you're going to get a Vim editor screen where you can uh, type and save and quit to save the scheduled job. <clears throat> okay, like this. Okay, I'm going to come out of it right now. I will show you a practical. In a little while okay so let's run uh, let's uh, learn about some uh, really important crone concepts first okay so individual jobs uh, consist of six fields uh, detailing when and what should be executed when all five of the first six fields match the current date and time the command in the last field will be executed okay so it means is when i open that when I ran this last command, cron tab space hyphen e, okay, it gave me the option to enter the details of the com uh, 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 of the job that I want to schedule. Okay, so how to schedule a job using cron? There is a particular way that you can do it. Okay, so you have to specify at what time you want this job to run. Okay, <clears throat> for that, the format is in this way. So the first field is minutes then hours then day of the month then month then day of the week and then command okay this minutes field which is the first column okay in a in a cron job accepts the values between 0 to 59 which means you can specify at which minute the job should run okay similarly for hours the values are accepted between 0 to 23 to accept the number or uh, the number of hour 
at which you want to execute the job and similarly for day of the month it is 1 to 31 and the month is a, it is 1 to 12 or you can also use uh, jan for jan uh, january febb for uh, february and so on and then day of the week except 0 to 6 okay so 0 means sunday the start of the week and 7 means a saturday the last day of the week okay or you can also use sun mon and so on and then you have to specify the command that you want to run okay we are going to see a practical to uh, see uh, these things in real okay but i just wanted to give you a very high level overview of the format of a cron job and this is a uh, i mean one of the most important things to learn in linux it is often asked in the interviews as well okay even in the devops interviews you may find a question on cron jobs okay how to schedule a cron job in linux this is this could be the question so you have to uh just uh, uh ensure that you are able to first specify the format in which a cron job is scheduled so you have to specify these six fields okay and then you have to just uh, tell them uh, how you can actually uh, schedule a job okay which i'm going to show you in a in a short while okay so here are some examples so we have two examples here this is example one and this is example two so let's see example one okay to schedule a job so i already ran this command crone tab space hyphen small e and i am getting this screen here now i can schedule the job so what i'm going to do is the scenario here is okay i, I haven't written anything in in details but let me just tell you the scenario i want to schedule a job on this machine wherein I'm able to create a file, a blank file called test1 every minute, every hour, every day, every month and every day of the week, which means at each minute, at each minute, I mean, after I schedule the job, it's going to create a file called test1. Okay. I'm going to repeat myself. If you go back to the previous slide, it says that there is a particular format in which you have to schedule the job. Okay. So these one, two, three, four, five if, that you see are these fields, these star fields. This first star is for minute. The second star is for hour. The second star is for hour. The third is for day of the month. The four the fourth is for uh, the month and the fifth is for day of the week and then the command to be executed if you see it follows the same format okay one two three four five and then the command which needs to be executed okay so let's see it in action on a terminal so i'll just type i to to use the insert mode to enter text into this uh, vi file and what i'm going to do is i'm going to type star space star space star space star space star okay which means uh, i'm using a wildcard for all the entries which means i want this job to run each minute by default okay and then the command is touch space test let's name it test 2 okay escape all right then uh, quit and save so do sorry quit and save colon x enter so you can see chrome tab installing new chrome tab if i do ls here i don't have any files right now right so let's wait for a minute and we will see a new file being created using the chrome jobs using this chrome job okay So it's going to take a while since a minute we have to wait okay <clears throat> so you have to understand these five fields it's a must you should remember this these five fields by heart okay and this is as i mentioned asked in the interviews a lot and now you can see i did not create any files on my own right i just scheduled a cron job 
using the uh, specified format and i uh, i mean uh, just after a minute i see the the file it's being created okay if i do cron tab space hyphen l i can see the job that was uh, scheduled okay now if i remove this file again since i've scheduled this job to run every minute right every minute every day every hour every month every day of the week it's going to create the file again so if i'll do rm space hyphen rf test 2 the file is not there but after a while you will see this file again created because of this scheduled job okay so this is the this is uh, the most basic example of a cron job okay if you see now the file has been created again okay so this is the beauty of cron job and if i have to remove this cron job i will do cron tab space hyphen r enter now if i do a cron tab space hyphen l i won't see that job again okay the jobs have been deleted all right i hope the concept is clear now uh, let's see one more example which is slightly complicated now in example 2 i again want to schedule a job okay and but the condition is i want this job to run <clears throat> at 9:08 pm okay this 21 means 9 if you follow the 24 hour time format so 21 means 9 okay and 08 is uh, 08 minute if you remember from the uh, this slide so the first one is minute and the second one is hour sorry i think there is slight mistake so minute and hour sorry yeah so this is 21st minute of the 8th hour okay the meaning of this okay so a 21st minute of the 8th hour on each day of the month right on uh, on each month and on each day of the week the meaning of this particular these five fields okay so 21 is a 21st minute and uh, this 08 is the 8th hour okay and then i have uses uh, and i am using these these wild cards which means i want this job to run each day of the month each month and each day of the week okay and then i mean what i want to do i want to print a text called a test text into a file called test.txt okay so so let's see this in action so so i'm going to schedule another job cron tab space hyphen e and i'm going to type i to enter insert mode and then i'm going to uh, uh, copy this so what i'll do uh, 2108 space star space star space star and then i want to echo something we can type anything so echo random text where i want to print this into a file called random.txt okay for example control x enter okay but if you see let's open this again so the meaning of this is this job is going to run at the 21st month of sorry uh, 21st minute of 8th hour right each day each month each day of the week and uh, the uh, uh, the command that is going to run is this command echo random text to random.txt file okay but since we i mean i cannot wait for this time to happen so what we'll do is we'll edit it as per the system time okay the time that this command accepts is the time on the system okay how to check the time on the system you can just type date enter and you will see the time so you can see the time is 624 right now okay if i check again the seconds will change all right so let's schedule this job for 625 okay if i can 625 so 625 will be 25 6 all right and enter if you see now so just after i change the time i am able to see a file called random dot uh, random dot uh, random dot txt which means that as soon as the time changed to 625 on the system okay 
Now let me show you the job again. So as soon as the time changed to 625 on the system, okay, it ran the command. Okay, random text at uh, redirected to random.txt. If I do uh, uh, cat on this file, yeah, I will see that same text. So this is how a cron job is scheduled. Okay. I hope this example was clear to you. So I showed you the example where you are using all the wildcards for all the fields and I showed you another example uh, wherein I entered some specific uh, time details at which the job should run. Okay. So similarly you can make, I mean you can try uh, different combinations of these five fields on your own. Okay. To test the command. So this is how a cron job is run. The user cron jobs are run in Linux. So let's now remove that. So I'll do cron tab space hyphen r enter. And if I do cron tab space hyphen l, I won't see that again. All right. Next is system job, uh, system cron job. So the ones that we just practiced are called user cron jobs. Now we are trying to learn system cron jobs. So apart from user cron jobs, there are system cron jobs. System cron jobs are not defined using the cron tab command but are instead configured in a set of configuration files. The main difference in these configuration files is an extra field located between day of the week, day of the week and command field, okay, which is username specified under which a user a job should be run. So system cron jobs are similar to user cron jobs, but there's a difference in one, one more field is there. Okay, so there's one more field in system cron jobs as compared to user cron jobs the field is username so you have the option to specify under which username the job should run okay else everything else is same also uh, there's one more difference in the command that it uses so system cron jobs are, are not scheduled using the cron tab command it is uh, scheduled uh, using some configuration files okay so if you see here <clears throat> if i cat this uh, cron tab file which is which is located in slash etc it's going to uh, give me the format of the default system cron job okay so let's go to our terminal and do cat slash etc slash cron tab so you will see the same thing so it, it just shows an example of how you have to run the system cron job under slash etc slash cron tab okay so now let's read through the slide again uh, system cron jobs are defined in two locations Okay, the one that I just mentioned slash etc slash cron tab and also slash etc slash cron dot d slash star. The meaning of this is either you can specify the command in this file cron tab. Okay, or you can specify your own files in slash etc slash cron dot d. Okay, so you have two options to uh, schedule system cron jobs. Okay. Also, these uh, cron jobs, I mean, uh, some of the cron jobs are already there on the system and they run every hour, daily and uh, uh, every week and every month. Okay. So as, as it is uh, just mentioned here also, there are some uh, predefined jobs that run every hour, every day, every week and every month. Okay. These jobs will execute all scripts placed in slash etc slash cron dot hourly slash etc slash cron dot daily slash etc slash cron dot weekly and slash etc slash cron dot monthly. So apart from this and this, there are some other locations as well where you can uh, keep the scripts. Okay. Scripts means the jobs with uh, the details. I mean the details of the job written in a, in a text file. Okay. And then those files should be uh, uh, executable. Okay, so you have to ensure that whatever scripts or whatever files you are keeping in these different directories, those files should have X permissions. Okay, since it, it just accepts the scripts in these locations to run. Okay, and uh, yeah, that is what it is mentioned. All scripts placed in these directories should be made executable. So you have to run chmod plus X command to add the uh, execute permission to these scripts. Okay, so just remember that 
So these are not the locations to hold the configurations files. This is the location to hold the scripts or your cron job detail okay and you have to ensure that you have this x permission attached to all the scripts okay else the scripts will not run all right so let's see some examples so this is just one example that i wanted to show in this video so the scenario is i want to schedule a system cron job okay to count the number of active users okay so how i can do that <clears throat> let's become root for this one since we're trying to schedule a system job uh, so let's become root okay so i'm logged in as root here and let me see what all jobs are already scheduled so i'll do chrome tab hyphen l so I, I want to see all the user jobs scheduled as root user okay so there are no jobs all right and i'm going to get rid of a file which is already there test.txt okay so i don't have anything right now so what I'll do is <clears throat> to uh, schedule a cron job, a system cron job in Linux, I'm going to create a script file. Okay, if you see, I want uh, to create a script file called user count, okay, which is going to count the number of active users for me. And I'm going to keep this under slash etc slash cron dot daily, which means I want this job to run daily. Okay. So I'll do vim slash etc slash crone dot daily and then user count. So if you see, I, I already have this file because I was trying to test this script. So I don't have vim installed. So what I'll do, I'll use vi editor instead of vim editor. Okay, so this is the script which is going to count the number of active users for me. Okay. And same I've, I've given here also. And let me just give you some in, in uh, just some information into how this file is written. So if you remember from one of our past lectures, I spoke about how to write a script, a script in Linux, especially a bash script will have something, uh, 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 something called a shebang at the start of the script, which is a hash and exclamation mark together. It's called shebang. Okay, and then the name of the default shell that you want to use to run the script. In our case, it will be slash bin slash bash. And then what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to specify a variable. So this is the part of scripting. So I'm going to cover scripting uh, in some other video, in, in some other learning series. But here, since we are uh, trying to schedule a script using crone, so I, I, I mean, I had to mention this here, okay? So this is the way to specify a variable in a bash script. So I'm using this variable name. It can be anything. You can use any variable name. So here I'm using user count and what this user count variable will hold. It will hold the value, which is W space hyphen H. Then I'm trying to pipe it with WC space hyphen L. The meaning of this is W command is used to check the list of active logged in users on Linux system. Okay. Then space hyphen h represents it is under uh, it is uh, I mean the details will be in the human readable format and then I'm trying to count the number of lines using wc space hyphen l it is used to count the number of lines that you get in a command okay so in this way I will be able to count the number of users logged into my Linux machine okay and then I'm used uh, I'm, I'm using this logger command so a logger command is used to generate a default manual log entry on your Linux system. So I can use logger command. So what I'm trying to do logger, then I'm trying to write, there are currently a dollar user count. Okay, dollar user count means I'm trying to specify the value of a variable here. Okay, the variable is user count. And as I uh, just know that in, in the previous line, the value of the user count will be the number of the number of lines that I see after I run the w space hyphen h command okay so it's going to store the value of this user count variable here, here okay so to uh, to uh, uh, specify the variable you have to specify this a dollar command in a script and then you have to write the name of the variable that you want to use and i know that this variable is going to hold this value so there are currently 
this active users the meaning of this okay is okay <clears throat> so if i if i try to run that command w space hyphen h you can see the number of active users and if i um, pipe it with wc space hyphen l i'm going to see the count so the count is one because i just have one line here in this command right i just have one line so it just counted the lines the uh, lines of the output which is one right now okay and also i have to ensure that this this particular script is always in uh, an executable mode for that i will do ls space hyphen l to check sorry ls space hyphen l on the location where i've kept the uh, this uh, cron job file so i'll do cron dot daily and, and and you can see this user count is uh, is uh, i mean having the uh, execute permissions okay so uh, this is the way to uh, schedule a system cron job okay but then again we have to wait for uh, we have to wait for this uh, i mean file to run or this script to run because it is a, a cron dot daily job but this is how you can schedule a system cron job on on a linux system okay so uh, try this uh, on your own and uh, let me know if you face any issues all right so that's all i want to cover in cron jobs i hope you liked my video if you did please hit the like button share this video with others and subscribe to my channel all right guys i'm going to end the video now and i'm going to see you in the next one